Hello, and welcome to this edition of Energy Connects Discussions with me, Julian Walker, as I speak to leading energy executives and experts in the lead up to the second edition of the World Utility Congress, taking place on the 8th to the 10th of May at ADMIC in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. I'm delighted to have Cornelius Mattis, CEO, DAI Desert Energy and MENA Hydrogen Alliance, joining me for this edition. Thank you very much, uh, Julian. Uh, delighted to be with you and uh, looking forward to speaking on uh, uh, the World Utilities Congress. Absolutely. Let's get down to it. Um, so can you tell me, first of all, a bit more about DII Desert Energy and what you're doing in the renewable energy space? Sure, with pleasure. So we are a think tank, uh, completely uh, technology neutral, uh, between private and public sector, we started 2009 when renewables were still uh, expensive, exotic uh, to, you know, uh, set up a plan for solar, wind and connecting markets, North Africa, Middle East. And uh, we started working in hydrogen in 2017 and uh, 2019, we published the first major report, which led to the foundation of the main hydrogen lines. And since then, you know, we've attracted a lot of uh, partners. Uh, mainly the doers of projects, utilities, uh, investors, developers, uh, and unique uh, companies along the emission-free value chain and also along the hydrogen value chain. And, you know, we, we do studies, uh, we create opportunities, we create markets, uh, and uh, more, let's say, looking forward, we uh, create a, a platform uh, to step-by-step -step work towards a tradable market uh, of uh, hydrogen and zero emission energy overall. Wow, that's really interesting, Cornelius. And um, I just wanted to get so two things. You know, how important will renewable energy be to help push forward the energy transition? And then also the sort of same question, but on hydrogen. Yeah, that's a good question, Julian. So on renewables, you know, the last 14 years, we've come a long way. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, when we started, renewables was uh, expensive, exotic. Uh, it's not so anymore uh, by any means. Even if you look, if you look at UAE, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, you know, you have among the world's largest solar projects operating today with among the world's lowest tariffs, if not world records. So uh, renewable energy has become the cheapest form of energy by far, by far outcompeting conventional generation in the region. And this uh, has been the main driver of bringing us towards an exponential growth. So very, very, very important. And in hydrogen, you know, since we launched the MENA hydrogen line three and a half years ago, the world completely changed. Like even only in a year or two, so many projects. Uh, we had 59 projects in the region now. Um, Neom Green Hydrogen had financial close. This is of world relevance, uh, you know, completely unsubsidized, uh, just a pure commercial project of $8.5 billion, uh, 2,200 megawatts electrolyzer. So uh, there is a paradigm shift which uh, we also see in UAE, but the entire region and globally on hydrogen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've seen that global impact that our hydrogen seems to be having, um, especially on policymakers and, the, and governments really looking at it. But um, what do you think policymakers can or should do to unlock the development of renewable energy, including hydrogen? Well, uh, policymakers play a crucial role, and uh, on renewable energy, we've seen this with uh, the development in the region, with uh, you know ma major government procurement programs, with uh, reverse bidding, which led to a success story, like in the UAE, like in more recently Saudi, but countries like Morocco, Jordan, of course, also setting up regulations to have multi-market segment uh, developments. So I think uh, what policymakers should do, first of all phase out entirely immediately all fossil fuel subsidies, which is also for net zero 2050, obviously a major impediment for credibility. So this uh, process was started, but needs to be completed as fast as possible. Uh, and then obviously uh, price of CO2, that's uh, the second big thing. And I think towards COP28 now on uh, carbon trading and potentially pricing CO2, this is a major thing. And then of course, to introduce uh, federal strategies on hydrogen and the UAE is due to launch uh, and everybody is really following this with great excitement. It is uh, imminent to be published, uh, the federal hydrogen strategy and then Department of Energy as well and other countries for sure they will follow. 
Absolutely, yeah. We, we're all waiting to see that come out. And um, I wanted to also uh, get your thoughts on, you know, see, in the Middle East, solar power is important, um, but obviously only you know, set select, select countries were starting on it. Do you see it expanding? I mean, obviously, seeing Saudi looking at it, but I um, want to get your viewpoints of the opportunities within the solar industry. Yeah, well, we, we see a massive movement now, as I mentioned, towards exponential growth uh, curve. And uh, this is purely driven by financials. So, uh, well, the big point was in November 2014 for Diva Phase 2, the fam famous uh, 5.84 cents. Nobody thought this is, was possible at the time because in minds of people, was solar is like 10 cents. Uh, well, uh, Aquapower made it possible. And since then, look where we've come. Just in a few years, in less than a decade, we've come from, from six cents to basically one cents. And uh, so there's one cents, uh, two cents solar in the entire MENA region. We we see Egypt as a huge player, Binban, Morocco, um, and uh, even Algeria is following now. Saudi is uh, uh, introducing a, a huge program. Also, Saudi is between one and one and a half cents uh, solar levelized cost of electricity. So we see a major movement, but not only for solar, actually also for wind, because countries like Morocco, like Saudi, like Oman, like Egypt, uh, they have world-class wind conditions as well. So, uh, and even solar and wind combined, this is a perfect way to produce among the world's cheapest green hydrogen. Absolutely. Um, and I just want to get your viewpoint on, you know, some of the major challenges um, companies face in terms of financing domestic renewable energy projects um, in the power sector? Well, uh, the challenges, obviously, they're different from country to country. Uh, GCC is very bankable, uh, world-class infrastructure. Uh, Egypt, Oman, other countries, you know, they're more challenging on the bankability side. So, uh, unfortunately, from a macro level, uh, there's not much uh, we can do. But at least from a regulatory level, to introduce an as uh, you know investor friendly and as sound as possible uh, regulatory regime, uh, you know starting from production, but also for the application side, I think this uh, for sure, and then creating a level playing field. And I can only repeat, you know, phasing immediately all uh, fossil fuel subsidies out. I think this is also a basis really of credibility on the way to net zero, as uh, more and more countries introduce net zero 2050. Um, and uh, yeah, and also increasing a price for carbon, like in Europe, you know, starting to penalize all sort of harmful emissions. Uh, I think this will even further accelerate the movement uh, towards, uh, uh, you know, zero emission energy of all forms. Absolutely. And uh, so you mentioned at the, at the beginning of the episode, um, got the World Utility Congress coming up in May in Abu Dhabi. Um, what are you looking forward to that event? And also, how important has this event become, even in its second year, for the future of the global power sector being hosted out of Abu Dhabi? Yeah, well, uh, the UAE, of course, is our home base. So always delighted uh, to support events of such a kind. And we've had uh, an amazing, actually, um, Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week and the first Green Hydrogen Summit in January, you know, with a, a ministerial panel. I had the honor to, to chair and now another very important event in Abu Dhabi. So very, very looking forward to. And uh, I think, uh, well, there will be all the movers and shakers. Uh, there will be probably key people for COP28 as well. Uh, and uh, so really looking forward to and uh, contributing, like always, with, with the team and seeing many of our cooperation partners there. Great. Well, thanks, Cornelius. I appreciate making the time to speak to me today and sharing some of your insights and views on this fascinating topic. And I look forward to seeing you at the World Utility Congress in May. Thank you so much, Julian. It will be my pleasure. Looking forward to it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And just a reminder, the World Utility Congress 2023 will be taking place from the 8th to the 10th of May at ADMEC in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. Thanks for watching.